Hey, what's up everybody? It's Andrew with Rerun Guns, and today I'm going to be discussing gun stocks. So yes, this is not the stock on your gun, this is stocks in the stock market. So right now there's four publicly traded stocks that are related to firearms in the stock market. I'm going to go through all four of those and discuss some of the pros and cons and whether right now is a good time to jump in and invest in gun stocks. So also just as a disclosure, um, this is just my personal opinion. Also at the moment, uh, at the time of this filming, I do own one of the stocks, which is Olin, Olin Corporation, OLN. So currently holding a thousand shares of that, but it's subject to change. You know, I trade pretty frequently, probably a couple times a week. I'm moving around things in my portfolio, but that's really the only stock I'm actually holding right now at this time. And if anyone's curious, the way I kind of handle my finances is I kind of have a high risk, portfolio, a medium risk portfolio, and an ultra low risk portfolio. So that's kind of how I divide my finances in case anyone's interested. And if you all want me to make more topics on this in the future, you know, just let me know down below. But for now, we're going to get into gun stocks. We'll go through one by one. I'll show you the research tools that I use. And again, make your own decisions, but I'm just sharing my own personal opinion. Also, it's important to note that with stocks, there's nothing guaranteed. The stock market could shut down tomorrow and you could lose all your money. The stock could go down. The CEO could I don't know, do something crazy, right? So there's always risk involved and you have to go into this understanding those risks. So make sure you talk to a professional, talk to your wife, make sure everything's okay on board before you jump into this. But personally, I've been doing this for many years. I've been able to make a good portion of money and it's something I just wanna share with you all. One last thing I wanna mention is that I do use TD Ameritrade as my broker. They, I chose them because they have excellent customer service. You can literally call them whenever you want. They also have really good resources on their website and they also have Thinkorswim, which is a really awesome trading platform in my opinion, probably superior to all other ones that I've seen. But again, do your own research, see what works for you. I can get you guys 500 commission-free trades if you're interested. All you gotta do is send me an email down below to werungunsatgmail.com and I'll send you the link so you can get 500 commission-free trades. In exchange, I get 10 commission-free trades for myself. But, you know, again, if that's not for, for you, you know, it's all good, no problem. If you're on a lower budget and you don't have 3,000 to deposit into an account, I'd probably recommend going to Robinhood. They have zero commission-free trades for all your transactions. It's like black magic, I don't know how they do it. But yeah, check them out as well. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the first company I'm gonna start with is Olin Corporation. This is actually the company that I have the most conviction with. And just to give you a little bit of background information, uh, they are the number one alkali uh, capacity globally, uh, number one in North America for bleach and acid, number one global supplier of epoxy materials, integrated chlorinated organics. And you might be saying, why would I be talking about this if I'm talking about gun stocks? And the answer is, it's because they own Winchester. Now, Winchester only makes up a small portion of their business. I would say less than 20%, I would estimate, maybe even less than 10% of their brand is actually Winchester. They make most of their money from epoxy, as you can see here, and chloral alkali products and vinyls. So obviously, you know, they own Winchester. We're all familiar with Winchester. They make farms and mostly I believe they make their money from ammunition, as you can see here listed, and probably some of the more premium products, you know, some of their more higher end ammunition. It's probably something they'll make more money with. But here you can see obviously their website. And more importantly, let's go to their financials and see why I have the most conviction with this particular company and why I'm personally invested in this company at this time. But like I said, I move stocks around pretty regularly. I trade every week. So, you know, this could change on a dime. But at the moment, I'm holding a thousand shares of this company. And here's a couple of reasons why. So first of all, they have a big market cap. So that means they're a pretty big company, $2.7 billion company. Um, it's not a high cap, you know, company, but it's probably mid, you know, relative to other companies. It's not exactly like Apple or anything like that. But one of the things that I like is that they're at a 52 week low right now or trading near it. So right now um, you can see that we're trading at, let's see, it's uh, 1673. That was our last closing price. And you can see the range for the last 52 weeks has been 16.14 to $32. Um, another thing I like about it, it's held mostly by big institutions, not by average Joe like me and you. So 91.82% is actually held by big institutions. Only 5% of people are actually basically betting that it goes down, which is not very high. Um, and one other thing I like about it, uh, PE ratio, meaning the price per earnings, which kind of tells us the value of the company. The lower this number is, the more value generally you're getting from the company is 10. That's pretty low relative to other companies and especially relative to the stock, the S&P 500, which is trading somewhere in the 20s, upper 20s. 
Um, and then one of the key features I like about this stock is that they pay an annual dividend of 4.86% right now, almost 5% you're getting that they're paying you quarterly, which is every three months, regardless of the stock price, wherever the stock price moves. So they're paying you 20 cents every quarter. Now, of course, the company could stop paying their dividend at any time, but this company has a record of paying their dividend, I believe, for the last 130 something quarters. So they're extremely consistent in paying their dividend. So even if you're going through tough times with the stock, you're always going to get this this value right here, which I think is really big. So that's pretty much what I like about it. Beta 1.6 is a little bit high. Beta basically means how volatile the stock is. And more importantly, let's take a look at the charts. So if we click on the charts here. So here's the stock. Let's look at a one year view. So here from a one year perspective, you can see that we're pretty low. Now, previous you know history does not always imply future history. It could continue to go down, but in my opinion, you know, we're trading well below the SMA, which is our average over a 50 day period. And um, I think it's poised to go up. You know, that's just my general instinct about it. But, um, you know, I could be wrong, but even if I am wrong, like I said, I still make that 4.8% um, dividend yield annually, which is pretty good in my opinion. So basically, I've been buying all the way down this dip here towards the end. I started a little high, to be honest. I was probably around 21 or so, and I've been averaging down since. But luckily, I've been able to make a lot of intraday trades to kind of lower my cost basis. So basically, I'll buy and sell Olin on this rip. So every once in a while, it'll pop up, I'll sell, goes down, I'll buy, pop up, I'll sell, go down, I'll buy. So my cost basis is actually a little lower, you know, thankfully, because I've been buying all the way down. But I do hope in the next four months, six months, that it does pop back up to around 22. Their last earnings call, I did listen to it. It was not great, honestly. But they said this was like a once once in a quarter type of deal. There was a lot of unexpected things and they expect uh, the next few quarters to do better. Also, this was like their slower time of the year. And normally they do um, have better business towards the latter half of the year. So I am expecting it to do better. And they don't have a lot of exposure to uh, the trade war in China, unlike other companies. So that's Olin Corporation. Don't wanna beat a dead horse here, but we'll move on to the next one. So this is the next one that I'm interested in. Uh, I'm not obviously holding anything now with this company. I'm only holding Olin right now, but this is Vista Outdoors. Many of you are familiar with the brands here. Um, Bushnell, we have here uh, Tasco, Night Optics, um, let me see, Blackhawk, a lot of you might be familiar with, uh, Uncle Mike's, Eagle, Hoppies, Gunslick, Federal, CCI, Blazer, I mean, Camelback. Let me see what else here you guys might be familiar with. Independence, Fusion, American Eagle, you know, all these types of ammunitions. You know, these are all with um, VSTO or Vista Outdoors brand. So when you're buying their company, you're buying into all these. Now they, on the other hand, have been hit pretty hard, honestly by the the trade tariffs and if they continue i think they're going to do even worse but the problem is is that they weren't doing too hot with their earnings before the trade tariffs and this is really um concerned me because now as trade tariffs escalate you know they're going to get hit even harder because most of their products especially like for their bike product maybe not ammunition but their biking products and outdoor sports equipment all that stuff comes from china so they're going to get pretty hit hit pretty hard on their margins and you know their profitability but let's uh take a look at it real quick they are near their 52 week low which is something i really like i'm kind of a bottom feeder there i like to pick up stocks you know on the general premise of buy low sell high right so i like companies that are doing you know poorly at the moment when i buy them hoping that they pick up but you know it could be kind of risky but that's personally my strategy what i like to do and we can see here they're a $272 million company. They actually hold, I believe, right now like $400 million in debt. So they actually have more debt than the company's actually worth. So that's what these banks are assuming is that they're willing to pay that back. So that could tell you that they're a little bit undervalued because they literally have more debt here. But they recently sold uh, Savage Arms. You guys might be familiar with them. And they used like $120 million from that to pay off a debt. They initially had a debt 
of 1.1 billion, if I'm not mistaken. And they've been able to pay it down now to like 300 million or 400 million. So they significantly chopped down their debt in the last uh, 12 months. And I think that's a good sign. So their debt has been consistently getting lower. It's 97.33% held by institutions. So big companies are holding on to this. This is not your mom and pop. You know, and these institutions must be really hurting right now with the way the stock has been moving. Um, if we want, we could look to their earnings or their chart charts here so you guys can take a look at it. Here's the chart. You guys can see a one-year view. It's just kind of been consistently going down. Even a five-year view consistently been going down. So obviously it's not great. You definitely have to be a risk taker to jump in on this, but just think about it. I mean, if we're trading around four or five dollars and it's been valued at some point around fifty dollars, you know, it has the potential eventually to turn around. They are, I believe, the number one producer of ammunition in the United States. And I don't think ammunition is going away anytime soon. So that's kind of my conviction on it. I think if it goes low enough, I would be willing to pick it up. Another thing I wanted to show you, if we could go back one second to Olin, something that I use as a tool that TD Ameritrade offers that I actually really like. Something that I really like is these research tools right here in the bottom. So if we look here on the right, you can see new constructs, the street. I like CFRA. You know, obviously they're the most bullish. They're the most optimistic for the company. But if we click on it, they kind of like break it down really well. So basically, even though the last price they see it as was sixteen forty-seven, they have a twelve-month price target of twenty-three dollars. That's where they see it coming. That's probably one of the most important things here. You could read like the important like why they why you should buy it, what are the risks and whatnot and then if we come down here this is probably one of the most important things that i like to look at is fair value calculation so basically what they do is they calculate based on the company's profitability what their assets are what their liabilities are what this company is actually really worth despite what the stock investor may think so based on what it's actually worth they basically are saying that the stock is worth 2154 which is significantly higher than where we're at now actually 30 percent higher than so 30 percent higher than where we are now so that actually gives me comfort in buying a company that's currently undervalued and based on their calculations it is and that's what gives me also confidence to invest in it as well so we went over uh bsto we looked at their stock let's move on and let's go to american outdoors brand and you might be saying who is this and it is smith and wesson so they basically hold, own Smith & Wesson, m and Thompson Center Performance Center, and Gentex Suppressors. So that's who you're buying into there. And again, these guys are also near their 52-week low. All the gun stocks are really near their 52-week lows. So um, that could be a good thing, right, for investors and a bad thing right now for their business. Their businesses have not been doing very well under Trump. But... Um, you know, I think gun gun buyers have been pretty lax lately. You know, we had a lot of urgency with um, President Obama and, you know, the market's been basically soft recently. But hopefully that turns around, especially elections are coming around the corner. Um, a lot of threats being made both ways. So, you know, I don't I don't see it as uh, something that's going to be long term. Um, obviously, the market's always going to go through cycles and these companies have been tried over you know many generations and they've lasted especially something like smith and wesson so let's take a quick look they have a 427 million dollar uh, market cap so kind of small companies still relative to other big companies out there like tesla or whatnot but i still like them their pe ratio here is 23.5 so a little more expensive than olin right you see their dividend no dividend at this time so their stock goes down there goes down you're not getting any quarterly you know, payments like you would with uh, Olin Corporation. Um, let's see here, uh, percent held by institutions, about 75%. And we could go down here, CFRA doesn't even have a rating for them. And everyone else is pretty much neutral down the line on what their stock is gonna do. Uh, if we go to charts, we could take a quick look. So here we could see basically how they did over the last, what, five years? You could see over the last 10 years, um, so definitely they're hit kind of like a low point right now. Um, they have been as high as $30 in the past, you know, which could be optimistic for investors, but who knows when they're going to hit that again. I would just personally buy it on a huge dip. Um, and I'm kind of looking out for that right now. 
Last company we're gonna look at is Ruger. So they don't own any other brands. It's literally just Strum, Ruger and company. So just Ruger. And you know, they have a lot of uh, firearms that we're all very familiar with like the 1022 and uh, the Mark series of pistols and several others. Um, unfortunately, their pistols, I feel like haven't really penetrated like the Glock market, but I mean, they do have a lot of big winners in my opinion, like the LCP2, it's a gun that I have that I really enjoy. You know, and several others I think that are coming on to the market and you know becoming more popular. But um, of course, you know they have some revolvers as well. I think Smith and Wesson personally is known for the revolvers a little more. But you know Ruger's been there for a while. I think they will continue to be. Here's some of their financial information. Nothing too exciting there. But um, let's take a look here at the company itself. So as we see here, they have a market cap of 731 million. Um, this is kind of where they're at right now. Also, look, as you can see here, near a 52-week low. All the gun stocks are basically near 52-week lows, which tells me as someone who likes to take risks that, hey, this could be a good opportunity in the future. These stocks could double, maybe even triple, um, or at least make a decent return, right? So we see 77% actually held by institutions. Earnings per share, 2.3 and um, PE, that's actually pretty decent. And then their PE ratio is 18. They do have an annual dividend, which is pretty cool, 2.2%. But again, this doesn't really compare to my uh, golden <laughs> golden egg, which is uh, Olin, which is gonna pay you almost 5%. Um, but again, you know, who knows? Maybe this company rises, you know, a lot faster than the other one. Uh, if we go down here, you can see what's the opinion of a lot of, you know, major uh, analysis companies. Uh, you can see here they're a little bit more positive, neutral, neutral, CFRA doesn't really have an opinion, market edge, I believe they're more technical. And again, the way to look at stocks is basically there's two different you know schools of thought. You could look at valuation, which is like the PE ratio, how much profitability they're having. And then you could also look at technicals, which is like straight up looking at graphs, not worrying about um, what they're actually valued at and just looking at what previous results they have, trying to predict what future results they have. For example, right now they have this big red bar going down. So they down here and look at history. When they had a big red bar, look what they did afterwards. Big red bar continue to go down in this case. So kind of like technically looking at it and seeing if it's cheap relative to, you know, previous years. One last thing I want to show you all is my actual trading platform here. So this is the thinkorswim platform. As you can see here, you could have multiple charts open at once. Pretty cool, you could just automatically buy and sell here. Um, I have a limit order right now to sell at 250, just 250 shares. I am holding a thousand, so I, if, you know, as soon as it reaches this, I'm, I like to do things in stages, buy and sell in stages. And I'll leave these orders out, as you can see there for Olin. Um, just, you know, just in case I'm busy or whatever, it temporarily reaches one of my price targets, it'll sell. You know, and I plan on selling as it goes up, you know, at specific increments to make sure that I'm profitable in my investments. And like I said, I'm very patient with this. I don't mind waiting. And you can see here VSTO, Ruger, AOBC. Uh, what's cool is you could change this out to even three years or whatever it is. You, you see here their earnings that they earned like in the previous quarters. Um, and then again, you could like, you know, zoom into specific areas if you want to. So I think it's pretty cool here, SPY. So this is the S&P 500. I noticed that Olin Corporation tends to mimic the S&P 500. So if the S&P 500 is doing well, Olin generally does well and so forth. But you know, if Olin, it has a general like downward momentum, it's gonna be exaggerated to the downside. So sometimes when I'm trading Olin, I like to look at the S&P 500 and kind of see, you know, predict from one graph what the other graph is gonna do. And then here you get CNBC, I think, which is pretty cool. You get to watch this. Um, for free, basically, if you're um, a TD Ameritrade member, because someone like me, I don't pay for cable at home. So if I do want to watch the news live, I do get to do that here and, you know, follow their stock. So all in all, it's a pretty good platform. Um, I don't want to make this video too long. It's already pretty long, but I hope you all enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave it down below. I'm always trying to help, you know, new guys, especially if you're into the gun community and you want to learn about stocks or investing. You know, I think it's really important that you guys learn about this. And, you know, people, you know, something my uncle taught me that he's pretty successful is that you don't build your wealth through your salary. You build your wealth through your investments. So making investments, making smart investments is really important. A lot of people like to stay diversified. Um, and I think that's a pretty safe bet. 
the market is going to have its fluctuations, but if you're not in the market, you're never going to win. So, you know, I think it's important to at least get your feet wet and start, you know, learning about the market so that, you know, if there is a big downturn, you could definitely take advantage of it. Don't think you're going to be able to take advantage if you've never been in the stock market because you're not going to really know what you're doing. But uh, anyways, that's it. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate the support. And I'll see you on the next one. WRG out.